which is me. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. Sorry. Make sure you can still hear me. Still hear me, can you still hear me, can you still hear me? Let's see what these guys want. Maybe something not too terribly intense. What happened, Ribby? You silly girl. You silly girl. She's so silly. Just kitties. Let's see, where should we put that? I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's okay. She did I tell you she got her teeth she got five teeth full. So she she shouldn't eat hard. Well, yours might have been soft anyways, but she's not supposed to eat. Really what we need to do with this. Your cat? Oh. Oh. No. I just took her this was like a few months ago she went in for like her physical or whatever and they said that she had one bad tooth that needed pulled and you could tell it was like brown but then um when i guess when they did the x-rays yeah but they have to like put them under put them under for it so yeah uh, well, that's enough for you you silly girl you silly girl do you guys have anything like in particular you want to do or not do or older stuff? Shoulder heart openers. Okay, cool. Yes. Really? Okay, mom, I'm getting tight. I think maybe a couple more people are coming. There's people. <laughs> I love you. Oh, hell yeah. There's more peeps. Yay. What's your name? Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thanks for coming, guys. We're just getting started. There's only a couple of people in here, so. Amazing, John. Let's do bowls first. Let's lie. Let's lay down on these things to start, don't you think? Why not? Oh joy. <laughs> so, mom, if you have a bolster or something of the like at home. Just gonna lay down on top of it to start. And also you don't have to stay if you don't want. I'm just talking to an invisible person. You have to grab a mat. A little breeze. I got you. Oh. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Do you like it that way? Oh. It's like technically the bottom, but some people use it that way. I don't know. You're so welcome. Okay. All right. So we decided we're going to do some shoulder stuff. Is that cool with you guys? Okay. Shoulders. Nothing too crazy. Yay. Our class is shaped up beautifully. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and just get started. So comfortable seat and just take a moment to stretch a little bit, move your body, whatever feels good. And then as you're ready, lie down on top of your bolster. So take it, if you guys know goddess pose, take it behind you, just like so. And then you'll just lie down on top of it. And once you're laying down, might even feel good to kind of stretch your arms long, legs long, and eventually come to rest, come to stillness in a position that feels good and somewhat sustainable. So you can be here for just a little bit. So let your shoulders open and relax. Feel into the opening of the front of your chest, the front of your heart. And just notice what feels really good here. And then also what might feel a little bit uncomfortable, a little tight or a little stiff. 
Let's take three big, deep, intentional breaths together to begin. So wherever you're at in your breath, just exhale, let it go. And great big, huge inhale. See if you can feel your inhale move all the way down into your low belly. Pull. And then big open mouth side, just let it go. Ah. Good, do that a couple more times. So great big inhale, fill up. Hold in fullness, let that breath circulate around inside. And then big open mouth sigh, release. Um, very nice. One more time, just like that, huge inhalation. When you think you're full, see if you can even sip in a little bit more. And side out your mouth, let it go. Good, seal your lips now. And begin to cultivate ujjayi breath. So in and out through your nose by way of the back of your throat. So start to create that gentle whisper noise, that oceanic sound. Sometimes people even call it a Darth Vader breath. So see if you can not only feel your breath flowing through you, rising and falling, expanding and contracting. See if you can also hear it. You might notice as you lay in this position, are there any spaces that feel a little tight or stuck or heavy? Are there any spaces that feel like it's hard to get your breath to move into? No judgment, but just observation. So exploring that with your awareness. Be here, just resting in this position. Allow your body to just relax around this posture as much as you can for about three to five more breaths. So really just let any resistance you're holding on to start to melt away, start to soften. So you might notice, are you tensing up through your facial muscles, through your forehead, eyebrows, eyelids? Are you tightening up even through your hands or your fingers? Just by noticing, becoming more aware, maybe something starts to shift or change or soften. Take your last couple rounds, resting with your heart wide open. And then as you're ready, just find your way onto either side of fetal position. So you can just kind of roll off the side of your bolster nice and easy. And then take a moment to rest on your side body. So just really feeling your body against the ground, letting yourself be held by the ground. Breathe into your back body and use this as kind of a counter pose after that little heart opener. So now you're curling in. Good. And then from here, we'll come onto our backs. So scoot your bolster out of the way. If you want to sit up to move your bolster out of the way, that's fine. Or you can just kind of push it off to the side. And then come onto your back so that you're just laying on your mat, bolster off to the side. And then once you're on your back, draw your knees in for a moment, find a gentle rock from side to side. So give your low back a nice little massage against the ground. And then sit yourself up for a bridge pose. So feet on the ground with your knees bent. Feet about hips width distance apart, all of your toes face forward. 
Your ankles come straight down from your knees. Arms by your sides. Exhale, pull your belly button down and scoop your tailbone up. And then as you breathe in, peel your spine off your mat, one vertebra at a time. And then once you get to the top, you can't really go any further. Option to work your shoulders underneath you. So kind of rock side to side, bring your shoulders underneath you more. So you feel more of an opening through the front of your heart. And then arms to robot arms, cactus, or not cactus, robot. So <laughs> palms face each other, fingertips face the sky. Yes, perfect, you guys. Sorry, Lisa. So bring your elbows to the ground by your sides and get your elbows as close as you can to your ribs. And then from here, we're going to lift and lower just our butt. So take a big inhale as you are. And then as you exhale, see if you can lower just your butt down so that you're creating a little tunnel underneath the middle of your spine. Get your butt as close to the ground as you can. Press your ribs up. And then inhale, lift your butt back up into your bridge pose. Do this a few times with your breath. So exhale, lower just your butt down. Press into the back of your head, backs of your arms, heart towards the sky, ribs towards the sky as you lower, and then inhale to lift back up. Yeah. And you should start to feel into your mid spine, your mid back. You should feel mobility there strength there and you might feel into your low back as well so this is one of the best ways to find mobility in your mid spine and it's a place where for some reason most of us don't have very much awareness we don't have very much mobility and this is a big kind of a big area where we want to learn to move into our back bends from so if we can find mobility here such a big difference in how we move into every single heart opener. So just feel the awareness of your mid spine, of your mid back. Feel the strength there. Moving with your breath up and down. Take about two or three more rounds, just like this. You guys are looking really good. So try to make that tunnel underneath your spine as big as you can. It's like I have an invisible rolled up yoga mat and I want to slide it right underneath the middle of your back so make room for it good work you guys take one more round and then end up back in your regular bridge pose and then from your bridge pose stay in your bridge but just work your shoulders out from under you reach your arms now straight up towards the ceiling Take one more inhale and see if you can lift your hips a little higher as you hug in with your inner thighs, press into the inner edges of your feet, and then exhale one vertebra at a time. Slowly roll it down. Good. You guys all have such good awareness. Nice work. Once you are back in neutral spine, tee out your arms or cactus your arms against the ground. And then keep your knees bent, keep your feet on the ground, but walk your feet out to the width of your yoga mat, nice and wide. And just windshield wiper your knees a few times side to side. And go slowly so you can really feel into your low back, into your hips. Yeah, and each time your knees fall to one side, really work your top knee forward and down. Moving back and forth with your breath and just noticing sensation. Take one or two more rounds. One or two more times side to side. And then as you are ready, bring it back to center. And you might rest for just a moment with your feet wide, knees together, and feel into the space in your low back. Eventually draw your knees in towards your belly again. Take that gentle rock from side to side. And then 
You can find your own way up to hands and knees if you want to, or option to rock and roll forward and back along your spine. So you can grab backs of thighs, fronts of shins, or even reach your arms straight up and rock a few times back and forth. Make these rocks as smooth as you can, building up some momentum, but stay in control so you could stop if you wanted to at any time. And then eventually rock up, cross your ankles, bring your hands to the ground in front of you. So just kind of roll over your feet. And you'll probably need to crawl back a little bit so you're nice and centered on your mat. Once you are on hands and knees, cat cow undulations. So inhale to lift the crown of your head, lift your heart, lift your tailbone, spread your front ribs, and exhale to round and hollow out, curl in. And as you move through cat cows, get curious about your mid back mobility, mid spine. So a lot of people, when they move through cat cows, they're mostly just using their upper and their lower backs. Their mid back just kind of gets lost somewhere in the middle. So see if you can start to feel the mobility you have there. Find some awareness there. Good. And if you want to get a little more intuitive or creative, move your hips side to side or even circle them around, feel free. Take about three to five more breaths, just working from hands and knees. And then eventually find your way back to a downward facing dog. No rush. Nice job. And as you work back into your down dog, just explore and feel around. So maybe you want to pedal out your heels. Maybe you want to shift your hips side to side or give your head a little shake, a little nod. So finding as much length as you can from your fingertips all the way up to your sit bones. If it feels better to keep a bend in your knees, perfectly fine. If it feels good to work your legs towards straight, go for it. So you are the only person that knows what your body feels like inside. So feel into that and honor that. Get curious about making little adjustments that make you feel more supported or more efficient in your own body. Big deep breath. So ujjayi, is it still there? Is it still flowing through? Can you still hear and feel it? Take one more big inhale into your down dog. And then as you exhale, look to the top of your mat and however you want to get there, forward fold. Once you have arrived, find a halfway lift position. So spine nice and long, parallel to the earth. Get all the rounding out of your back. Exhale, fold and bow. Nice L, root through your feet and rise all the way to stand. Take your arms to the sky, big stretch. Hands to your heart center as you exhale. Inhale, reach up and pause right here. Bend your left elbow, bring your right hand to the top of your left elbow and gently coax your elbow down into the right. Make sure you're not tucking your chin in towards your chest but keep your chin slightly lifted. Press the back of your head into your arm behind you. You can stay here if this feels like enough. If you would like more, right arm behind your back and see if you can clasp. So stay here or here, and then option if you want to add a little side body stretch, and it's just an option. So hips would move to the left as the crown of your head reaches to the right. Keep pressing the back of your head into your arm behind you. Breathe. Feel whatever there is to feel. Breathe into your left side. Breathe into your left shoulder, left tricep. Soft through your face. Unclench through your jaw. Take one more round wherever you're at. Inhale back to center. Both arms up. And then as you exhale, right elbow bends, left hand to right elbow, encourage your elbow down and to the left. 
So find your edge here, press your head into your arm, lift your chin ever so slightly, stay here or left arm behind you. See if you can find that clasp. And then last option only if you want, move into a little side body stretch. Sometimes I even like to reach my left tiptoes out to the left. So a little more weight in your right foot if you're taking that side body stretch, hips to the right, crown of your head to the left. Nice job, you guys. So your own variation of this pose, breathing in to wherever you feel it the most, breathing into the tight spaces, softening where you can soften, take one more round. Inhale, come back to center, both arms to the sky. And then as you exhale, bring your hands behind your back and interlace your fingers. Roll your shoulders back and down, shoulder blades hug your spine. And it might even feel nice to kind of roll your head around a little bit, working into your neck. So stay here for a moment, breathing, feeling, observing, and then eventually find your way back to neutral. If you can reach your hands back away from your body, Take one more big inhale, lift your heart, lift your gaze. And exhale, hinge at your hips, dive down slowly, forward fold with your hands clasped. Hang out in your fold for about three rounds with your fingers interlaced. So let your neck relax. If it's helpful, bend your knees more or widen your stance more. So crown of your head towards the ground and then sit bones towards the sky and knuckles towards the sky. Good job, you guys. You can give your head a little shake or a little nod if you want to. Big spacious breath, take one more inhale. And then as you exhale, bring your hands to your low back and release your clasp, let your arms hang down. You can give them a little shake out. Next time you breathe in, find your halfway lift position, spinal extension. Exhale, plant your hands, step your feet to the back of your mat, plank position. Take an inhale at the top to prepare, and you might even rock forward to your tippy toes or come to your knees to modify. Exhale to slowly lower down to your belly. Nice, Lizzie. Spider-Man Cobra, so bring your hands out really wide onto the hardwood floor. Lift to your fingertips, elbows face the sky. Inhale, lift your heart. And as you exhale, take a little twist to your right and see if you can dip your left shoulder down a bit. Nice, Lisa. Inhale back to center, heart lifts. Navel to spine connection as you press down through your pelvis and shoelaces. Exhale, other side, little twist. Inhale back to center. Go one more time, each direction with your own breath at your own pace. Feeling into your shoulders, feeling into your front body, back body, side bodies, even lower body. Eventually, an inhale will bring you back to center. You can hold there for as long as you want to, as long as feels good. And then however you want to get there, downward facing dog. All right, from your dog pose, inhale, take your right leg to the sky, stretch and lengthen. Exhale, use your core to step your right foot forward as soft as you can. And then we're gonna come into a warrior one stance. So back heel pivots down. I like my feet on two train tracks rather than a balance beam. Your back toes face slightly forward and slightly out to the left. Rise when you are ready. So in warrior one, you want your hips as close to square as possible. Front hip pulls back, back hip pulls forward. If this bothers your back knee or your back ankle or your hip, then shorten your stance a bit. Step your back foot forward or further out to the left. So make it feel right in your body. Yeah, nice job, you guys. Nice, Charlotte. Take one more big inhale into your warrior one. Lift your heart, lift your gaze. As you exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers. 
Roll your shoulders back and down. And if you want a little more intensity, press your palms together like they're suction cupped. Bend your elbows and try to squeeze your elbows towards each other like they're magnetized. Keep all of that and see if you can start to reach your hands back. And then maybe lift your heart. Pop up through your chest. One more inhale here. As you exhale, humble warrior. So right shoulder towards the inside of your right knee. Keep tracking your right knee open towards your pinky toe. But keep wrapping your right butt cheek underneath your body. Yeah, you guys look so good. Back leg is strong, back foot is rooted. See if you can lift your knuckles up towards the sky. Maybe draw your chin in towards your chest and really hear your breath as it flows through the back of your throat. Soften your face. Nice out. Really good. Take one more inhale. Lift your knuckles. As you exhale, hands to your low back and slowly rise back up. Arms to the sky. Exhale this time, bring your hands to your front thigh and kind of lean forward, preparing for a warrior three. So as you lean forward, root into your front foot, float your back foot off the ground, hips are square, press your back foot, stomp it onto an invisible wall behind you. Yeah, you can keep your hands on your front thigh or try adding some arms. Most intense will be arms straight forward. You can also go out to both sides or back, hands to heart center. You choose what works best for you today. Take one more full round of breath. Awesome job. End of your exhale, forward fold. So go ahead and bring your hands to the ground. Step your left foot down next to right, top of your space. You can give your right leg a little shake out if you want to. Inhale, lift halfway, lengthen, realign. Exhale, bow and fold. Root through your feet, rise all the way to stand. Reach up and stretch. Hands to heart, exhale. All right, inhale, take your arms up. This time, pause here, grab your left wrist with your right hand. Turn your left palm towards the right side of the room and then up and over like a crescent moon shape. So more weight in your left foot. You can reach your right tiptoes out to the right if it's helpful. Keep your left shoulder plugged in. So pull it back and down into the socket. And then with your right arm, you're gently tugging and pulling, but resist with your left arm. Keep plugging it back in. Yes. That's right, Lizzie. Breathe into your left waistline, left rib cage. And just feel all that space. See if you can create more space with your breath. Thanks, Lisa. One more round. Inhale back to center. Switch your grip. So grab your right wrist. Right palm faces towards the windows. And then same thing, up and over. More weight in your right foot. If you try to create this just from your upper body, your range of motion is super limited. So start from lower body. Lean into your right foot, lean into your right hip, and then upper body to the left, crown of your head to the left. Tug on your right arm, but resist with your right arm. So if you were to let go, your arm would slingshot out. Breathe into your right waistline, rib cage. See if there's any more space you can create. Beautiful poses, one more round. Inhale back to center. And then as you exhale, just cactus your arms. Squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Lift your heart. See if you can find mobility right in the middle of your spine. Inhale, re-extend, realign. Exhale, slow dive down, forward fold. With your inhalation, halfway lift position. Beautiful, and then exhale, plant your hands, feet back. You can go straight to down dog or move through your vinyasa your own way. So adding or subtracting, whatever you'd like. Beautiful friends, ujjayi breath. Inhale your left leg to the sky, stretch, lengthen. 
And then use your core as soft as you can. Exhale, step your left foot to the top of your space. Warrior one, so set up your legs and then rise. Again, back toes, be slightly out to the right, slightly forward. You can choose if it feels good to have your feet on a balance beam, that's fine. I like my feet on two train tracks or two skis. Front hip works its way back as your back hip pulls forward, so hips work towards square. See if you can stay rooted through the outer edge of your back foot rather than rolling onto the inner edge. Good job. And if it feels like it's pulling on your back hip or knee or ankle, then shorten your stance a little bit. Take one more inhale to lift your heart, maybe even gaze up. And then exhale, hands behind your back, interlace your fingers, switch them this time to one finger over. So it feels a little bit unnatural, a little bit funky. Shoulders roll back and down. Maybe you press your palms together like they're suction cup together. Bend your elbows and imagine they're magnetized. Squeeze them closer. See if you can start to reach your hands back. Maybe it's a little, maybe it's a lot. And then maybe even add a little back bend. Lift your heart, lift your gaze, pop up through your chest. One more inhale here. With your exhalation, humble warrior. So bow to the inside of your left knee, left shoulder towards the inside of your left knee. Keep tracking your left knee open towards your pinky toe as you wrap your left butt cheek underneath your body. Stay rooted through the outer edge of your back foot. Feel a connection to your center, navel to spine. Chin towards your chest. See if you can hear your breath flowing through the back of your throat. Lift your knuckles higher and work that opening in the front of your shoulders. Very nice. One more big inhale. As you exhale, hands to your low back, release your clasp and rise up, arms to the sky. Exhale, hands to your front thigh. Prepare for your balance. So start to lean into your front foot. And then slowly, mindfully, back foot floats off the ground. Square hips, so inner thighs face each other. Your back toes face down. Plant your back foot on an invisible wall behind you. Make your back leg strong. Option for some arms if you would like. So maybe out to the sides, maybe forward, maybe hands to heart center. You do you. Nice, Charlotte. Very good. Long spine like you're in a halfway lift. Strong through your back leg. Take one more round of breath. Awesome, Lisa. Land softly in a forward fold, top of your space. So right foot steps down. Give your left leg a little shake out if it needs it. Maybe pedal out your heels a little bit. Inhale, halfway lift position. Realign your spine. Stick your butt out. Reach the top of your head forward. And then exhale, fold, plant your hands, step back to plank pose. From plank, we'll move into side plank, Vashistasana. Right hand is your base. So either roll onto the baby toe edge of your right foot, left arm to the sky, or you're more than welcome to come down to your right knee or your right forearm to modify. Lift your hips really high. So use your right side obliques rather than sinking into your right shoulder and your wrist. Option to reach your left arm forward. Feel that length in your left side. It's that same side body stretch we did when we were standing at the top of our mat. Now you're just on your side. Take one more inhale, maybe even float your left leg up, lift your hips higher. Awesome. And then back to plank or modified plank. Inhale at the top of your push up. Exhale, chaturanga. Ah. Inhale, peel your heart open. Back bend of your choice. Shoulders down away from your ears. Beautiful, Lisa. And then exhale, just a tabletop position, hands and knees. Set yourself up now for dolphin pose. So come down to your forearms. And if you're not sure how far apart your arms should be, grab opposite elbows. That's how far apart you want your arms. Forearms parallel, palms face down, fingers spread wide. Especially present the thumbs and index fingers. Relax your neck, let your head be heavy. 
push into the ground with your forearms and feel the strength in your arms. Then tuck your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips, come into dolphin pose. So as you lift up, walk your toes as close as you can to your elbows. Don't let your elbows drift apart. Hug in with your upper arms. You guys look so good. Imagine there's a rope attached to your belly button and it's literally pulling straight up towards the ceiling. Stay where you're at if you want to. Otherwise, right leg lifts. So use the strength in your right leg to take some weight out of your upper body. It's like you're trying to stand on the ceiling. See if you can press your chest towards the back wall. Take three more breaths. I know this is a lot. It's a lot of intensity. You are so much stronger than your mind wants you to think you are. So use your breath to hold and support you. You can exhale out your mouth at any time. Ah, Nice work. Take one more round. One more great big huge breath. And of your next exhale, right foot down, knees down. And then we're going to move into thread the needle. So hands and knees, lift back up onto your palms. Bring your knees out at least tips width distance apart, maybe a little bit wider, just broaden your base. And then take your right arm out and up. Inhale here. As you exhale, thread your right arm through. So come down to rest outside of your shoulder, outside of your head. And you can keep this pretty restful, or if you wanna make it more active, you're welcome to do that. So what would feel most beneficial in your body? Your left arm might wrap behind your back. You might interlace your left fingers with your right fingers and give your right arm a gentle tug, kind of working the space in your upper back. See if you can really feel your breath as it flows into your back body, upper back, mid back, low back. All the way to empty with your exhalations and connect back to your center. Take about two or three more breaths right here. Soft through your face, through your jaw. Good job. If you do happen to have your left hand or your left knee lifted, set them back down slowly. And then with your next inhale, unthread your right arm, reach it up one more time. So out and then up as high as you can, open through the right side of your heart space. Exhale, right hand down. As you're ready, downward facing dog. All right, friends. Inhale your right leg to the sky. And then try not to shift through your hands or your shoulders and peel your right hip open. So bend your right knee, reach your knee out to the right and then up towards the ceiling. So it's like your right hip is a hinge on a door and your leg is the door, it just swings open. Hey, Charlotte, feel a connection to your center. So you're still lifting from your center using your core strength. Hug in with your left inner thigh so you're not sinking into your outer left hip, getting lazy there. So hugging towards midline, take one more inhale, right knee high. You can stay and hold or exhale, right knee, left elbow, or just as close as you can come. Inhale, back up, three-legged dog. Option to scorpion your leg, open your hip if you want to. Exhale, right to right, aim for your armpit. Push the ground away as you come forward. Yeah, nice L, inhale back up, three-legged dog. And then last one, knee to your nose. So round your spine, scoop out your belly, then softly step forward. This time we'll rise to a warrior two stance. So back heel pivots down, back foot parallel to the back of your mat this time. And this time you do want your feet on a balance beam. So front heel intersects your back arch, or lines up with your back toes. Notice if it feels like your butt's sticking out behind you and wrap your right butt cheek underneath you. Track your front knee towards your pinky toe. If when you did that, you felt your left hip shoot forward, see if you can pull it back. 
So feel into a nice neutral pelvis while allowing your hips to open. Nice job, beautiful poses. Yeah, I like that. So to relax your shoulders a little more, rotate your palms to face up and see if you can feel your shoulders kind of drop down away from your ears. Then keep that. And left hand to your back thigh or your back hip. Reverse warrior, reach up and back. Keep the deep bend in your front knee. If you would like, option to grab your right wrist with your left hand. Use that as gentle leverage. Or you could even bend your right elbow, bring your left hand to your right elbow. Last option, only if you want to take it, you could clasp your hands behind your back. Stay aware of your legs. So keep bending into your front knee and tracking it towards your pinky toe. Wrap your front butt cheek underneath. Yeah. Side body stretch. So feel the length in your right side. Imagine you're trying to lift your right rib cage further away from your right hip. Wherever you're at, one more round. Inhale back to your warrior two. And then as you exhale, straighten your front leg, shorten your stance by just an inch or so, setting up for triangle. So as you move into your triangle, imagine there's a rope attached to your back hip. It's pulling towards the back of the room. And at the same time, you're reaching towards the front wall. So it's like you're being pulled in these two opposite directions. Reach, reach, reach as far as you can. When you can't reach anymore, right hand towards the ground or maybe right hand to a block, left arm to the sky. Hips are open, heart is open, shoulders are open. Nice job, Lizzie. Yeah. And if you would like, you can reach your left arm forward, bicep next to your ear, and feel all that length in your left side. If you want a challenge, this is some core work. Make sure you can hold the integrity of the pose in your legs. Reach both arms forward like you're holding an invisible block in between your hands. Wherever you're at, two more deep breaths. <sighs> nice job. Good breathing. From the press of your feet, next inhale, come back up. And just parallel your feet. So all 10 of your toes now face towards the windows. Arms to the sky, breathe in. Exhale, hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers once again. Roll your shoulders back and down. Squeeze shoulder blades towards your spine. If you want to be here for a moment, just working through your neck, feel free. Whenever you are ready, start to work into your forward fold. So at your own pace, dive down, crown towards the ground, butt towards the sky. See if you can lift your sit bones up really high. Work the stretch in the backs of your legs. See if you can lift your knuckles up really high. Work the opening in the front of your shoulders. Yeah, neck is relaxed, face is soft. Take about three more rounds. And if you want to release your clasp at any time, fine with me. Ah. Nice job, friends. All right. Next time you breathe in, come to a halfway lift position with your fingertips on the ground. And then crawl your hands to the top of your space. Rotate your toes to face forward, back to a low lunge. From low lunge, three-legged down dog. Take your right leg back and up. Open your right hip once again. This is a perfect place to stay. Option, if you would like, to flip your dog. So find your back bend, wild thing. Right foot comes down behind you nice and easy. Lift your hips, reach your heart forward like your heart wants to look up at the front wall. Feel the strength in your back body, feel the mobility in your mid spine. One more round, your pose, your fullest expression. And then regular downward facing dog, walk it out. Take a few breaths, walking out your down dog, or if you'd rather, feel free to sit into a child's pose. So just give yourself a moment, feel whatever there is to feel. 
Notice whatever there is to notice and just reconnect to your breath. I'm just going to give you something to try it. Also, widen your hands a little bit. Yeah, and then with your shoulders, external rotation. Just like that. That's so good. And then think of rather than pushing back from your shoulders, pressing back from your head. Yeah. All right. If you're in child's pose, one more deep grounding breath. And then everybody downward facing dog. Big inhalation into your down dog. Exhale, look forward, step, tiptoe or hop, top of your space, forward fold. Halfway lift position, breathe in, lengthen out. Exhale, bow and fold. Root through your feet, rise all the way to stand, arms reach, full body stretch. Hands to heart as you exhale. All right, we're gonna play with balance for a moment. So right foot is your base, your foundation. Left knee bends, left heel towards your left butt cheek, and then reach back with your left hand, grab hold of your foot. Once you've got your foot, Draw in with your inner knees. So like your inner knees are trying to kiss each other. And then rather than sticking your butt out, see if you can lengthen through your low spine by drawing your tailbone towards the ground. This is a great place to stay. You could also bring your right hand back, roll your shoulders back, stay here, work with balance, work with that stretch in your left quad. Otherwise, next option, right arm up, left hand to the inside edge of your left foot, the big toe edge. So feel your left shoulder open. Try to keep your hips square, a little bend in your standing leg. It's like your shock absorber. And then start to hinge at your hip. Kick foot into hand, pull hand back into foot, dancer pose. And then as you're hinging forward, see if you can find a little tiny cobra in your chest. Breathe wherever you're at. Hug in with your inner thighs so you're hugging towards midline. Soften your face. Take two more rounds, active through your left toes, try to spread them. See if you can come out ever so slowly. So end of your next exhale, super slowly, come back, set your left foot down, both arms to the sky, high mountain. Feel into a neutral pelvis, neutral spine. One more inhale. And then as you exhale, just slow dive down. Halfway lift, breathe in, lengthen. Exhale, plant your hand, step back to plank. And then you've got side plank now on your left hand. Roll onto the baby toe edge of left foot, or left knee can come down, left forearm can come down to modify, right arm to the sky. So lift your hips as high as possible to take weight out of your shoulder and your wrists. Yes. Option to reach your right arm forward, lengthen your right side. Maybe you even float your right leg up. And as you float your right leg up, lift your hips even higher. Take one more huge full body breath. So all this strength, can you find a little softness, little sweetness? Maybe you even just smile. End of your exhale, plank or modify. Inhale at the top as you push the ground away. And then exhale to slowly lower. Back bend of your choice, inhale. Just a tabletop position as you exhale. And set up for one more dolphin. So come down to your forearms. If it helps you set up, grab opposite elbows. That's how far apart you want your arms. Forearms parallel, palms face down, fingers spread wide. Relax your neck. Press into your forearms, hug in with your upper arms, tuck your toes, lift your knees, lift your hips. Nice, Liz, walk your toes as close as you can to your elbows. Press your chest back as you lift your hips high. Breathe, stay where you're at or take your left leg to the sky. Use the strength in your left leg to lift you out of your upper body. Take three more rounds. Soft base, 
Your heart is working towards the back wall. Your upper arms are hugging towards midline. Belly of your forearms pushes into the ground. You are so much stronger than your mind wants you to think you are. Use your breath. Feel into your body. Take one last round. You've got it. Ah, end of your exhale, left foot down. And then take a rest, knees to the ground. For just a moment, sit back into your child's pose. And then we'll move into thread the needle. So come up to hands and knees. Broaden your base, widen your knees a little bit. And left arm out to the left, up to the sky, breathe in. As you exhale, thread it through. Resting gently on the outside of your shoulder and your head. If there's anywhere you want to go on this side to explore, please feel free. And just big, spacious breaths into your back body, especially. You might even notice if you just shift your hips a little from side to side, it kind of changes where you feel the pose, how you feel the pose. So littlest movements sometimes they make a really big difference. So just stay curious. All these poses, we do them over and over again, not so we can tune out, but so we can tune in more. There's always more to be discovered, more layers to peel back. Take about two more rounds. <clears throat> if you do have your right hand or right knee lifted, set them both back on the ground. And then with your next inhalation, unthread your left arm, reach it out, reach it up, open up. Left hand comes down. And then find your way back to downward facing dog. All right, from your dog pose, inhale your left leg to the sky. Try not to move hands or shoulders. Open your left hip. So bend your knee, knee goes out and up towards the ceiling. Feel that opening in the front of your left hip. Keep your left foot active. I like to imagine there's a rolled up washcloth behind my left knee and I'm trying to squeeze it and wring it out. Take one more inhale here. Maybe lift your left knee a teeny tiny bit higher. Stay if you want or exhale left knee, right elbow. Come forward so shoulders over wrist. Push the ground away. Get as close as you can. Nice, Lisa. Inhale back up. You're welcome to open your hips, scorpion your leg if you want to. And then left to left. As high as you can get. Aim for your tricep. Aim for your armpit. Push the ground away. Nice, Liz. Inhale back up. Stretch. Maybe open, and then last one, knee to your nose, round, scoop out your belly, round through your mid spine, and step forward softly. Here of Adrasana two, warrior two, back heel pivots down, windmill your arms up, settle in. So left toes directly forward, right toes directly towards the right side of the room. You're standing on a balance beam. See if you can soften your shoulders down away from your ears. So sometimes it really does help to just turn your palms up and let your shoulders melt down. And keep your left palm facing up towards the sky. Bring your right hand maybe to your back hip or your back leg just slightly. And then reverse your warrior. So reach up and reach slightly back. Keep that deep bend in your front knee. Track it towards your pinky toe. Keep pressing into the outer edge of your back foot and try to stay in a side body stretch rather than moving into a back bend. So your chest is just open towards the right side of the room rather than forward. If you want to add, maybe you grab your left wrist, maybe you bend your left elbow 
right hand to left elbow or clasp behind your back. So find your own variation and maybe that's playing around with it a little bit. This is a practice, not a performance. So this is your time to get curious. You don't have to be perfect. You definitely don't have to look perfect on the outside. Take about two more breaths. Good, left side long, left waistline, left ribs. How much space can you create? One last round. And then back to your warrior two stance. Straighten your front leg and maybe shorten your stance just a little tiny bit, just an inch or so. Now remember, you've got that invisible rope. It's pulling on your back hip as you reach for the front wall. So you're being pulled into opposite directions. Pull yourself apart when you can't reach any further. Left hand towards the ground, maybe your front shin, maybe a block. Very nice, Liz. Everything stays open, good. So heart open, hips open. Option to take your right arm forward and find that length in your right side, only if you want to, bicep next to your ear. Yep, and then if you want, both arms reach forward. Use your core strength. Keep the integrity of the pose in your legs. Keep breathing. Big, spacious, full body breaths. One last round, you got it. Very nice, friends. Inhale, come back up. Just reach your arms out to both sides. And then parallel your feet. Arms to the sky. Inhale. And this time, just go ahead and dive down as you exhale. Anywhere you want to go for about five rounds of breath. So you might bend one knee and then the other. Maybe you bend and straighten your legs a few times. Maybe you grab hold of your outer ankles or outer edges of your feet. Maybe you want to twist. Good work. Last couple breaths. Inhale, find your halfway lift position with your fingertips on the ground. And then spider crawl your hands forward to the top of your mat, coming into a low lunge position. From low lunge, we'll move back into our three-legged down dog. So left leg back and up, open your left hip once again. Absolutely perfect place to stay or option to flip your dog. So left foot comes down behind you. Left arm reaches forward or perhaps you bring your left hand behind your head. Heart wants to look forward at the front wall. Lift your hips, feel the strength in your back body, the mobility in the middle of your spine. One last breath. Amazing poses. Nice Charlotte, nice L. Come back, down dog. Perfect, you guys. Walk it out in your down dog. All right, and then listen. From down dog, just rock forward to high plank or modified plank, inhale. Exhale all the way to your belly, slowly find your way down. And we'll move into shoulder pigeon. So turn your head to the left and reach your right arm out to the right. Palm faces the ground, roll up onto your right side body. So options for your legs. You can bring your left foot down behind you like a little kickstand. If this feels not okay in your low back, might feel better to keep your left foot down in front of you like a little kickstand. Sometimes I like to take my left peace fingers to my left big toe and extend my left leg straight up. So hand to big toe pose. You could take a quad stretch if you want. You could also just work with your left arm, reach it up and back. Like you're trying to get the backs of your hands to touch or even just wrap your forearm to the small of your back. 
Make sure you can relax your head either on the ground or you might use your bolster or block underneath your head. And then breathe as big as you can as you relax and melt into the pose. You can take it as deep or keep it as shallow as you want. So the more you lift your front body away from the ground, the deeper you will go. The more you turn your front body towards the ground, the less intense it will be. So find your own edge and then just be with it. Breathe into it, soften around it. Nice job, about three or four more rounds. End of your next exhalation. Just ease your way back onto your belly. And then from your belly, you guys, lift your chest just a little bit so that you can thread your left arm underneath you and bring your hands together, your palms together. I know it's funky. Okay, from here, uh, slide your right knee up towards your hands. Elle was just doing this, and I was like, that's such a good idea. Take your right arm up, and then back behind you towards the window. So open up into a nice twist. You can bring your left hand to the outside of your right knee if you want. And see if you can really let the right side of your heart open up. So your right arm might be kind of hovering above the ground if it is. Bring your right fingertips to your right shoulder. It doesn't feel so heavy. And reach with your elbow. Otherwise, reach out through your right arm. Breathe down into your belly. Good. Soft face, soft jaw. Big deep breaths. All right, end of your next exhalation. So take it all the way to empty. And then slowly, let's just rewind. So right arm reaches up, it comes back down. And then unthread your left arm as you reach your right leg back and just end up flat on your belly again. You can kind of rock your hips side to side or maybe windshield wiper your shin side to side. When you're ready, shoulder pigeon with your left arm extended out. So turn your head right, left arm out to the left, palm faces the ground, and roll up onto your left side. Any variation you want to take on this side. So tell me if this feels okay. It's like that. Perfect. It's awesome. Okay. And again, the more you lift your chest, your front body away from the ground, the deeper it's going to take you. The more you keep your front body facing towards the ground, the less intense it will be options right foot behind you hand to big toe right foot in front of you quad stretch and i realized you guys i forgot dancer pose on the left so don't worry we'll get it <laughs> Thank you. 
Take about three more. Big deep breaths. Last huge inhalation, fill up as big as you can, and maybe even hold at the top as you take an extra sip. And then big sigh. Ah. Roll onto your belly, nice and easy. And then from your belly, lift your chest just enough to thread your right arm underneath your chest so your palms come together. And then slide your left knee up towards your hands. Bend your knee, slide it up. Left arm up and back behind you. So let the left side of your heart open up. You can bring your right hand to the outside of your left knee or thigh if you want. And if your left arm is just kind of hovering and it feels really heavy, bend your elbow, left fingertips to your left shoulder and reach out with your elbow. Gaze up or over your left shoulder. So you can breathe all the way down into low belly, low back. Good job, friends. One last huge breath in your twist. Soften your face, unclench your jaw. And then ease your way back onto your belly, just rewinding. So unthread your right arm. And maybe you reach both arms out to the sides for a moment or down by your sides with your palms facing up. Just kind of rock your hips side to side or even windshield wiper your shins. And then however you want to transition, find your way back to down dog, no rush. So maybe you move through a child's pose or take a couple cat cows. Back in your down dog, just feel all the length and space you have created through your practice. Great big inhale into your down dog. Exhale, look to the top of your mat, step or hop forward, fold. Halfway lift, breathe in, lengthen out. Exhale, bow and fold. Root through your feet all the way to stand. This is your last time rising up. Big stretch. Hands to your heart center. All right. It's coming a little late, but now you're really ready for it. Nice and open. So left foot is your base. Right heel to your right butt cheek. Reach back with your right hand. Grab your foot. Draw your knees towards midline. So everything hugs towards midline. You can bring your left hand to your right foot. Roll your shoulders back and down. Reach your tailbone towards the ground. This is a great place to stay. If you would like to move into dancer, left arm up, right hand to the inner edge, big toe edge of right foot, shock absorbers in your left knee. Keep your hips as square as possible. Hinge at your left hip. As you kick your right foot into your hand, pull your hand back into your foot. See if you can find a little baby cobra. So use your mid back mobility to open your heart. Two more rounds wherever you're at. Hug in with your inner thighs. Spread your right toes. Breathe big, deep breaths. See if you can come back super slow motion into your high mountain. Release your right foot. Arms reach up. Feel into neutral pelvis, neutral spine. Shoulders rather than shrugging them up towards your ears. Down and back. Take one more inhale here. Exhale, dive down, forward fold. Inhale, lift halfway. 
Exhale, plant your hands, feet back, move through one last vinyasa, or if you'd rather skip it, just find a child's pose. Take some deep breaths into your hips, into your low back. And then from your down dog or from your child's pose, meet in the middle. <laughs> so tabletop position. And then find your way onto your back. So however you want to get there in whichever direction you would like to face today, just all the way down onto your back. And once you're there, whatever would feel good to you, maybe a full body stretch, maybe hugging your knees in, rocking it out gently. And then come into Supta Baddha Konasana, feet together, knees apart. Recline cobbler's pose. So feet together, knees apart. And if this bothers your low back, slide your feet a little further away from your upper body. Bring your arms just down by your sides or out to your sides, palms face the ground. And then really press your heels together. Exhale all your air out. And as you inhale, see if you can lift your butt up. So just your butt lifts off the ground, squeeze through your outer glutes. And imagine you're trying to press your knees down as you lift your hips up. Knees down, hips up, press through your heels, squeeze through your glutes, hold one more big deep breath, squeeze, 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 lift, lift, lift. And release. Ah, take a moment, it might feel good to kind of flutter your knees up and down. We're gonna do that two more times. So two more rounds like that. If you wanna adjust in any way, feel free to adjust. And again, exhale all the way to empty. Press your heels and inhale, lift your butt off the ground. This is a great way to open your hip flexors to stretch the front of your hips. So squeeze through your glutes, press your knees down. It's like somebody's trying to press your knees towards the ground, but you're resisting. You're lifting your hips up towards the sky. Hold, hold, hold. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Lift, one more inhale. Exhale, release. <sighs> Again, if you want, just a little flutter of your knees up and down. Last round. Heels together, press them firmly together. Exhale all your air out. And then inhale, hips lift, glutes squeeze, knees towards the ground, hips towards the sky. Try not to strain through your face or your neck. Breathe, lift higher, squeeze a little more, open your knees a little more. One more inhale, lift, lift, lift. And release. You can lift your knees back up. And just find the opposite. So now bring your knees together and your feet out wide to the width of your mat for a moment. Constructive rest pose. You can leave your arms as they are. Maybe you want to bring one hand to your heart, one hand to your belly. Just rest. So constructive rest, this is like my favorite pose ever. You're not really doing anything. You're just resting. But there is... Something happening on the inside. There is space being created. Feel it in your low back. Breathe down into your pelvic bowl. And you feel really good right here. Stay here for the remainder of our practice. If there are a few final poses or last movements that you'd like to take, Give yourself about 10 breaths. So I know we didn't do pigeon. If you want to, you could take a supine pigeon, a few breaths on each side. Maybe you want to take an inversion or a happy baby. And if you want to use your bolster again, like we did at the beginning of class for your Shavasana, 
you can slowly start to set yourself up in whatever way feels really good with your bolster or without your bolster. You, you could also use your bolster under your knees if you want. So just about 10 breaths. If there's any other places you wanna go, any other poses you wanna take, just finishing off your own practice for yourself. Anything else your body is calling for. And I'll share with you a little reading for my morning meditation I've been doing for the month of April. We've been working through the chakras and today was the crown chakra. It was our last day and it was the crown chakra and your crown, that's where you connect with your spirituality. That's where you connect with your own divinity. And I'm just reminded that in this world, we so often think, spirituality has to be this separate thing but I believe that it can really be intertwined with who we are in our everyday life and there is a way to hold both our spirit and our soul both that part of us that wants to expand that part of us that is bigger and vaster and connected to something greater and then the part of us that is grounded that is physical that is connected to this earth and our physical body. So you really can hold both and have both in your day-to-day -day life. In this reading, it just says, there is nothing that is not sacred. Every moment is part of eternity. Every friend is an angel. Making love to my partner is goddess worship. Each breath is connection to source. Every word uttered is an offering to the universal oneness, which is within and all around us. Forget trying to be spiritual. Spirit is your nature. Just be. Honor your nature. Worship with your regular, naked, native human tongue. So these last few moments, just feel into your nature. Feel into the universal energy that moves through you. And just let your body relax and soak in all the energy, all the efforts of your practice here today. Shavasana.
Take a big belly breath. And then let it go. And just slowly bring gentle movement back into your body. Wiggle fingers, toes, maybe even give yourself a little forehead or temple or jaw massage. And as you're ready, roll to either side, no rush. And take one last moment, just resting on your side body, curling into yourself in this nurturing pose. Letting yourself be held by the ground just a little longer. And using the strength in your arm, start to guide yourself up into seated meditation. As you come to sit, close your eyes, gather your hands to your own heart. And just bow your head to your heart in acknowledgement and gratitude. Thank yourself for showing up here this morning, making the effort, taking the time to do your practice, to slow down to connect with your body and your breath in an intentional way. And thank you so much for letting me guide you. Namaste. Thank you so much. Hope nobody's in a rush because, you know, Katie is at her usual uh, 10 minutes over. Sorry. Love you, mom. Thank you. No. Maybe I can't even figure out how to end it today. Great. Whew, you're so great.